Okay guys, so first I'd like to apologize that I never published my review for Ghost in the Shell. The truth is, I don't really know when I'm going to be able to get it out, because it's been ages since I've seen the movie, and I did try and record a review, but I just didn't feel ready to do it, so, um, of course I then never got around to it. Hopefully when the DVD comes out, I'll be able to do a review of it then. Until then though, guys, sorry that I hadn't been able to publish it, but anyhow, Despicable Me 3. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Zach here. Welcome back to Clapperball, where I'll be doing another movie review. This time I'm going to be reviewing Despicable Me 3. Despicable Me 3 stars Steve Carell, Christian Wiig, Trey Parker, Miranda Cosgrove, and Dana Geyer. It's directed by Kyle Belder, and it's the third installment in the Despicable Me franchise, not counting the Minions movie, which was a spin-off. It revolves around Gru, the supervillain who's now turned a super dad, who is looking after his family but ends up getting fired from his job when he fails to end up capturing the villain, Balthazar Brat. However, when it's revealed that he is a long-lost twin brother called Drew, they decide to get together and they try to become the supervillains that they should be and take down Balthazar once and for all. Okay guys, so I would like to clarify here that I have a big problem with the Despicable Me movies, and that is they get old really fast. The first time I watched the first Despicable Me movie, I was in school, and I really enjoyed it, but then I watched it like two more times, and after that I just completely got bored with it. For some reason the movie got so stale and boring after several views, like usually I can come back to movies quite a few times, the Despicable Me franchise, I've seen the first one about three, four times, the second one maybe two times, the Minions spin-off I've seen once, and yeah, the, the movies just get really stale and boring to me after several views. So I obviously wasn't really that enthusiastic when I heard we were going to watch the third Despicable Me movie in theatres, and coming out of this movie, honestly, this movie was just... I literally don't know what to say. I don't know if it was good, if it was bad, if it was mediocre. Like, when I came out of this movie, I literally didn't know what to think. And I've actually got my notes here, and I've literally had to come up with my verdict based upon the notes that I've written down, because genuinely, this movie, I just didn't know what to think of it when I came out of it. So I'll start off with the good things, because admittedly, there are few good things in this movie. The animation was fantastic. I love the animation in this movie. It looked absolutely gorgeous. And there's particularly moments where they, they have like an old 1980s tape, which they've had to animate. And the animation legitimately looked like they'd done stop motion instead of um, CGI, which looked really great. And um, there's also another moment in LA with the Hollywood Hills, and it literally looks like they could have taken a scan of the Hollywood Hills, put it in the computer, and then animated all of the characters over it. It genuinely looked that realistic. The voice acting from Steve Carell and all of the other actors was mostly really good. You can tell that they're having fun with their performances, which, as somebody who does drama at school, I'm in a drama class at school, if you're having fun acting, and if you're having fun playing a particular character, that's a good sign, because if you're not having fun, you're really not that motivated, and you can tell that they are enjoying what they're doing, and you can tell that they were definitely getting into their roles quite a lot. The movie also kind of brought back Gru's more villainous side. I will also give Illumination Entertainment credit that while their slapstick isn't really that funny, it's inventive, and it's really creative. And then we get to the bad elements. Yeah. This movie was such a mess. It felt like a bunch of ideas that had been made up by various different writers clobbled together in this sort of mishmash of various plots to try and come up with a story. That's genuinely what the movie felt like. The movie starts off with Gru and Lucy getting fired from their jobs after they fail to capture Balthazar, and so there's this new lady who is, you know, part of this, whatever agency it's called, you know, the, the sort of like the, the spy agency. She ends up firing them. This plot of them getting fired and having to get back their jobs is, it, it, it's, it's literally, it's a background plate for the story. It's only brought up in little bits of exposition. And the lady who ends up firing them, I kid you not, she is only in one minute of the movie and then she completely disappears. Initially, I thought she was going to be one of the um, people that they were going to be at conflict with, but no, she literally just vanishes from the movie and we never see her again. 
The movie was chock full with so many convoluted subplots, most of them pointless, which were all sort of intertwined with one another, and they were just so confusing. For example, there's this subplot where Lucy wants to try and connect with the three kids, Gru's three kids, and it's a subplot that is quite interesting because it's kind of like an interesting idea, but it, it doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't really add anything to the story. It's just kind of there and that's it really. There's also another subplot of Margot and that sort of kid at the cheese festival. You know how, you know, Margot is apparently meant to be his fiance or something like that. That goes nowhere. That literally, it's there, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't serve the plot. It's literally just there and then it's done in five minutes or something like that. We have Agnes, the youngest out of the three kids, who goes on her unicorn hunt. Guess what? That goes nowhere too. There's also a subplot of the minions getting, you know, like, they don't want to be with Gru anymore, and they're essentially, they run away, and then they get put in prison, and then they have to escape. That doesn't serve the plot too. It's just an excuse to add in, you know, scenes with minions, obviously. There's a scene where Gru and his twin brother Drew have a fight, and they literally get over that three minutes later, and I'm not, I'm not lying here, I genuinely do believe it's three minutes later. That goes nowhere too. Even the conflict with the main villain feels like a subplot, because it's so, it's weird, because it's there, it's there in the plot, but it's so in the background that there's genuinely no weight to it. It feels like just a gimmick that's there as, again, like I said, a subplot. It's that little of a deal, guys. And by the way, guys, the villain of this movie, Balthazar Brat, has to be one of the weakest villains I've seen in an animated movie in so long. And it's a shame because his motivation and essentially the premise for him wanting to be the villain of the movie is actually reasonably interesting. Because essentially Balthazar, he was a star in a Hollywood sort of TV series in the 1980s, but then when the show essentially, you know, started losing quality, Hollywood cancelled it and sort of cast him out. And so now he kind of wants to get revenge on the Hollywood studios and stuff like that, which is an interesting premise. It's a cool premise. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I can see where he's coming from. But again, it feels like a gimmick. There's no emotional weight to it. Which is a shame, because like I said, it's a premise that could have worked. Also guys, I won't give anything away, but his evil plan to take down Hollywood is, it's like, beyond unrealistic. It's so crazily... I, I can't... words can't describe how little sense his evil plot makes. It's stupid. There's also quite a few plot holes in the movie which I managed to pick out. There's a scene where Gru and Drew want to break into Balthazar's headquarters, and Gru, in the planning of this uh, of this plan, say something like, oh, he has an amazing security system which can basically block any attack from the air and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, if Balthazar is meant to be this amazing supervillain with an awesome headquarters, don't you think he would have defense for the water? And Gru and Drew, they don't even bother using like a submarine or anything like that. I'm not joking here, guys. They basically just arrive at the HQ by boat. And even then, when they're climbing up the side of the building, nothing happens to them, really. There's no, like, amazing defense system or anything really clever or sophisticated about the base. And Drew did say that it was, you know, defensive against air attacks, and they're, like, climbing up the side of the wall. Don't you think you'd have some sort of security cameras or something like that? There's another plot hole when Balthazar tries to destroy Hollywood, and he has this amazing giant robot tech suit, and you got to imagine, that thing must take a lot of planning and stuff like that to manage to get it to Los Angeles without anybody seeing it. I'm not joking, guys. They don't show how he gets the robot tech suit under the ocean. They don't show him how he gets it out of his special base or anything like that. It's just like, oh, you know, he's here in LA with his giant big mech costume thing, which he's going to destroy... LA with. Also, Balthazar manages to destroy at least half of LA, and yet when his his ultimate plan, his ultimate plan is, like, foiled, he claims, oh, you've ruined my plan, oh no, Gru, I hate you so much, and it's like, 
You destroyed half of Hollywood. And sure, your plan hasn't entirely worked, but you, st you still managed to, like, destroy half of the city. I'd say your plan was kind of a success then. I wish I could say that Despicable Me 3 is a funny movie, but really... It's not, honestly. Throughout this entire movie, I laughed maybe three times. And keep in mind that when I say laughed three times, I mean like chuckled, not like properly laughed, just like sort of smirked or something like that. That's that's it, guys. That's really the, the amount of times I genuinely found anything funny. It seems as though the filmmakers have decided to revert back to, you know, really sort of lowbrow humor, like, you know, punching and tripping and falling and slapstick, which really isn't that funny. And don't you dare say, oh, it's just a kid's film. No, that's not a legitimate reason for why a film like this should be lacking in quality. That's just an excuse. There are plenty of animated films for kids out there which are really genuinely brilliant, because they actually try. And I, I genuinely just don't think Illumination is trying anymore. I genuinely just think that they're relying on parents to bring little kids to go see this movie, to see, you know, the minions, and see the slapstick, and see all of the, the visual gags. And I think that's what Illumination is kind of, like, relying on now, without really bringing any substance to the table. Because if you look at the Despicable Me franchise as a whole, including the Minions movie, you'll notice there's a distinct drop in quality between each installment. So, for what it's worth, guys, as much as I did kind of enjoy the first film, and I guess the second film, I think, for what it's worth, it's time to call it quits on Gru and his family. And of course, the minions. Overall, despite what I'm saying though, and despite what you've gotten out of this review, this movie isn't terrible, and it's not offensively bad, it's just lacking in things it should have, and it's got too much of things that it shouldn't have. The movie uses slapstick and visual gags to keep you entertained, rather than a story with substance. For that, I'm gonna have to give Despicable Me 3 a 2.5 out of 5. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, as your opinions really mean a lot to me. I'll hopefully see you in another video very soon. Until then though, take care.